In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and unto the age of all ages, amen. Wishing all a blessed uh, feast of the Holy Nativity. And as um, you probably already know, um, the church kind of has three different groups of readings during this time of, of the year. So we just finished the first group of readings, which was the Sundays of Kyak, in which we went through the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 1, okay? Um, and then from the day before the feast, um, the paramon, the preparation of the feast, and the day of the feast, and today, these three are the second group of readings. Um, so the paramon of the nativity, the feast of the nativity, and the second day of the nativity all have to do with... Um, the, the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ and the events that come before, um, during, and shortly thereafter. <clears throat> um, this is actually a tough question. When do we actually read the birth of the birth of Christ and the visitation of the shepherds? Which day? Today, yesterday, or the day before? You would think it's the Feast of the Nativity, but actually it's the Paramon of the Nativity, uh, which we read the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 2. So what do we read on the Nativity? What is the Gospel that we read yesterday? The Visitation of the Magi, okay? um, which according to the Synic Sar of today happened a while later. Um, it didn't happen immediately because they had to come from the East and instead of it being the babe, it, he was a young child. Instead of being in the manger, he was in the house. Um, so anyway, um, that's, that's why the, these three days are important for us. Um, <clears throat> and uh, today is a very unique gospel. We read from the gospel according to St. John chapter 1. Right? And this gospel is pretty hopefully familiar um, with all of us because we also read it when? Sorry for all the questions. But the first hour of Agbeya. Does anyone know when else we read this gospel? So it starts with what? In the beginning, right? Um, and so... Usually when there is a beginning in our life, um, somehow we read this. So if a new child is born, um, we read this gospel. I think it's in the, the bathing prayer, right? If there is a new marriage, it used to be, um, the, we don't, we used to have two gospel readings and this was the first gospel, right? If there is a new priest that's ordained, the first day he comes back in his um uh, the first sermon is given on this gospel, right? So the church is teaching us what? In the beginning of anything that we do, we have to remember the very beginning um, where, and, and the fathers contemplate a lot on just these first three words or five words that St. John uh, gives in his gospel. <clears throat> um, for example, um, I'll just read a little bit of St. John Chrysostom um, when he talks about the comparison of um, the four Gospels and their beginnings, right? Um, so chronologically, which one do you think comes first, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, when it comes to the description of the beginning? This one, yes, the Gospel according to St. John. Um, St. John Chrysostom says, all other evangelists begin their Gospels with the unfolding of the divine plan. So St. Matthew says, the book of the gene genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David. And then he continues by saying the gospel according to St. Luke begins with his narrative with us for the account of the Holy Virgin Mary, which we read during Kiev, right? And then he says in the same way, St. Mark focuses on similar things, but he focuses on uh, his beginning is um, with John the Baptist and, and the epiphany or the theophany of the baptism of the Lord. Then he goes to St. John. John hints at these things briefly, but only later when he said, the word became flesh. Actually, that gospel, 
the Word became flesh, is the continuation of today's gospel, but it was read yesterday in the Matins. Okay, um, sorry for, but just to show how the, all of these important readings are dispersed um, among different days of the feast. So when, when we attend the, the, the days, we see how it all puts together. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, when he said the word became flesh, he passes by everything else, Christ's conception, his birth, his upbringing, his growth, and immediately describes for us his eternal generation. Um, so in the beginning, we have to remember the very beginning, right? That Christ is the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages. And then he asks why. Why does St. John do this? He says, um, here's why. Because the other evangelists focus chiefly on matters of Christ's humanity, St. John was concerned that because of these narratives, some people might dwell on these matters alone by steering away from earthly things um, and drawing them up to heaven. The evangelist appropriately begins his narrative from above, from the Logos' eternal existence. Okay, so here he's saying, in the beginning, we have to remember the very beginning, that Christ is the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, right? Um, he was one with God the Father and one with the Holy Spirit from the beginning of eternity. And St. Cyril actually con comments on this and says, well, how can you say in the beginning was the word? That means that God existed before even time began, right? So just that thought is, uh, helps elevate our minds and our hearts to the almighty power of God. <clears throat> and so um, St. John Chrysostom continues, he says, while St. Matthew begins his narrative with King Herod, Luke with Tiberius Caesar, and Mark with the baptism of John, the evangelist emits all these events and it sends beyond all time and age. So in our minds, in our, sometimes we need to, to also not just think about the beginning of whatever we're doing, or even the beginning of our life, or even the beginning of, of, of salvation, but even before that, the beginning of all time. He says, there he propels the minds of his listeners to the words in the beginning and doesn't allow them to rest there. Right? <clears throat> so in the beginning of our year or a day or a new service or a special stage in your life, don't forget the power and the glory and the blessing um, of God. Um, and uh, in the beginning of your problem, if you remember God, then everything gets put into the proper perspective. Um, so you know how many people say, those who don't learn history are doomed to repeat it, right? But the opposite can be said as well. Those who learn the good history are blessed to repeat the good history, right? So when Christ, the only begotten Son of God, was born of the Virgin and took flesh and became man and dwelt among us and granted us this great blessing, um, and and the the earth became a sword of heaven. Then when we remember this, um, and he did not he did not come to a great city, he did not come to a great place, and even the first visitors were not great in, in, in deed and in stature, right? The shepherds came first. Um, and so, and, and Bethlehem was, it was known, but it was not a great city. Um, so when we remember this, we remember how great God is and how much he humbled himself for us and how that we can become a Bethlehem. We, we can become a manger. We can become um, a heaven, right? Um, so, uh, in His Holiness uh, Pope Tordres' uh, uh, message this year, he mentioned a few very uh, powerful things, but then he speaks about the star, of, uh, and he says, the nativity nerve appears with the star to send us who are on earth the message that our life should be heavenly. Um, and uh, the heavenly life, he says, is a luminous life. It's a light, life of light. Um, and then he actually quotes St. John Chrysostom, who says, um, become a sun, a moon, or a star. The important thing is to be in heaven. And he says the sun symbolizes, you know, the, the uh, he says the well-known person, the moon not so known, but still known, and a star, nobody, right? Um, he says just like the nativity star or the village of Bethlehem, what is important is that a person lives in heaven. Um, and we, who do we call the second heaven in the church? The Holy Virgin St. Mary. Why? 
because heaven is where God lives, right? And and the Lord lived in her uh, womb for, for nine full months. But what about us? We have the Holy Spirit, right, dwelling inside of us. We take the body and blood of the Lord, so we can become a mini heaven, right? <clears throat> and this is what His Holiness is alluding to, where we should become like the star. We, we should have a heavenly life, even though we're here on earth. Um, and so um, don't put yourself down because you're not famous or you're not old or you're not rich. Look at the star. Look at the manger. Look at the inn, right? The Lord came to, to the, the lowest place um, in, in full humility to give blessing to that place. What is the city? What is the place that he was born in now? Of course, it's, it's a church, right? <clears throat> so um, as the fathers teach us, and as uh, St. Athanasius said this, and St. John Chrysostom also repeated, he says, God's own son became the son of man, that he might make the children of human beings into children of God. Right? So God became man, that man be may become more like God and, and become godly, right? And children, sons and, ch and daughters of God. He says, for when something great, he says, associates with something small, what happens does the greater become less important or does the small become greater? The small becomes greater, right? Um, and he gives uh, many examples about this. So when Christ took the form of a servant, did that lower his status? No, it made our status greater, right? So yes, we are lowly. Yes, we are sinful. Yes, we are sometimes far from, from the holy life, but when we strive and desire to, to um, be godly and when we realize what God has done for us and what he can do for us, that we shouldn't belittle the blessing that he has given us and that he will continue to give us. Um, and that's, I think, an important point because sometimes we say, oh, I'm not a saint or I'm not like so-and-so, um, but still God has the, the love and the desire to be with you and to be inside of you. Um, and so we shouldn't belittle this grace because then we don't allow the grace of God to work inside of us. Um, um, and sometimes we think this is humility, but it is not. It, it, humility is understanding how low you are, but when you realize God's grace, you receive it with the more reverence and the more love and the more praise. Um, so sometimes we get we fool ourselves um, in, in, in thinking that we're being humble by saying, oh, no, I don't deserve the blessing, right? Like, what if the Holy Virgin Mary, when our archangel came to her, said, you, you give birth to this, oh, no, no, I, I'm not worthy to do that. Of course, <laughs> no one is worthy, but she said, what, behold, I made to me of the Lord, let it be to me according to you, right? So, yes, we don't deserve the grace, but we have to accept the grace, um, because when we do, with the proper uh, attitude, um, and and uh, focus, then then God begins to work in us more and more often. <clears throat> uh, and so Saint John Chrysostom says, in the same way, the king who kindly and generally converses with the poor beggar in no way dishonors himself. Instead, he makes the beggar famous um, and and admired by all. Um, so when you hear the word became flesh, don't be shocked or dismayed. His essence was not changed into flesh. Instead, he remained what he was and took upon himself the form of a servant. Um, <clears throat> so um, there are many saints who are nobody. Like, for example, St. Louis. He, he named himself after his camel. He was not a priest he was, or, or a bishop or, or a patriarch, um, but he served with all his his heart. And, 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 and he was very humble, but he... Where is he now? He's in uh, his 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 um, name. He is named after the cathedral in which the patriarch pray pray in, right? So um, this is what happens in the small manger and and a random inn in a small town. Um, as again Saint John says, today Bethlehem resembles heaven. Hearing from the stars, singing of the angelic voices, and in place of the sun, witnessing the rising of the Son of Righteousness. So the Lord intentionally chose those places for his glorious birth. He planned to bring the simple shepherds 
before bringing the wise and rich and famous magi, right? He used the manger before he sat on the throne of, uh, at the right hand of uh, God the Father. Of course, he sat at the right hand of God before he took flesh, but the first thing or place that he decided to, to go to was the manger. <clears throat> Um, and he entered into the city, of uh, the town of Bethlehem before the, the great city of Jerusalem, right? So um, God does not take care as much about the buildings as much the temple of the Holy Spirit. Um, so the question is, well, where is your heart? Are you a temple of the Holy Spirit? Is the throne of God in, in you? Um, are you glorifying the Lord in reverence despite the fact that he... Um, we don't feel worthy for him to be with us. So don't say um, um, that it's not like so and such person. Um, God doesn't want to be here. Uh, I don't have too much to offer. Um, His Holiness Pope Tawadras also says um, about the the host of uh, or, or the innkeeper who offered the manger. He said, or sorry, the off, offered the, the place for the Holy Family to see. He said, we don't know if the manger was suitable to host anyone, it is for animals only. However, he still directed them to it instead of saying that he had no place, just like the other innkeepers probably said, we have no place for you, right? Um, he says, a life of service require, of others requires the avoidance of saying, I don't have, or there isn't any, or no. We don't say th these things to God. It says, it, it says, the manger became a warm, bright, and famous place in the world. So don't tell God, I don't have time, or don't tell him, I don't have enough for you. I don't have these talents or these gifts or, or any much uh, service to offer you. Instead, say, here I am. Um, behold, the maidservant of the Lord. Do with, with me as you wish. Um, I don't have much to offer, but I will offer whatever I have. Um, that's a different mentality than saying, no, I can't. Um, because even if you can't, God will make you be able to. He will transform you into, into um, uh, just like he transformed the, the manger and um, a, a place for animals into um, a, a glorious church. So um, this is the meaning of the gospel where he says, he dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. <clears throat> I'll conclude um, Again, I know it's very heavy today for St. John Chrysostom, but I'll, I'll con uh, conclude with one of his sermons for the Feast of the Nativity, um, just kind of to bring all of these together. He says, today he who is, is born, and he who is becomes what he was not. For when he was God, he became man, while not relinquishing the Godhead that is his. And then he continues and says, behold, kings have come that they might serve the leader of the hosts of heaven, women that they might adore him, who was born of a woman, so that he might change the pains of childbirth into joy, virgins to the son of the virgin, infants that they may adore him who became a little child, so that out of the mouth of, of babes he might perfect praise, children to the child who raised up martyrs through the rage of Herod, the 144,000. <clears> Men to him he became a man that he might heal the miseries of his servants, shepherds to the good shepherd, priests to those who become the high priest, to him who has become the high priest. Um, servants, to him who took up the form of a servant. Fishermen, to the fisher of humanity. Publicans, to, to him who from among them named a chosen evangelist. Sinful women, to those who exposed his feet to the tears of the repentant woman. That I may embrace them all together. All of these sinners have come, that they may look upon the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He says, since therefore all rejoice, I too desire to rejoice. In the proper way, right? Um, he says, um, but I may take part, not plucking the harp, nor with music of the pipes, nor holding a torch, but holding in my arms the cradle of Christ. He says, this is my hope. This is my life. This is my salvation. This is my uh, pipe and harp. And, and bearing it, I come. And having from its power received the gift of speech, I too with the angels and shepherds sing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Good will toward men, for we do now for the age of all ages and all. <clears throat>